In this video, I'm going to have a look at Windows 10 environmental variables. So let's see when they're useful. If I go to C, users, and I want to access my user folder, we see that it's C, users, and Philip. And the name Philip is unique for my user account. So therefore, if I create a program to save a file within a subfolder of my user folder, Philip, and you copy it to your computer, it's not going to work because you've got a different username. Now to overcome this, we can use an environmental variable. So to access the user profile, we can use the environmental variable user profile. So it's enclosed in percentage signs. And we can access these subfolders by using the environmental variable, followed by the normal notation we would use to access a folder. So we just use the slash and then documents, and this takes me to the documents folder. So we can repeat this with desktop. So this is a clean install and there's basically nothing on the desktop. And we can go to pictures and we can basically access the main libraries using this method. So We've got documents, pictures, music, desktop, downloads, and videos, for example. And there's another environmental variable associated with OneDrive, just called OneDrive. And I don't have OneDrive set up on the system, but if you did, you could use this to access the documents folder within OneDrive, alongside the music and the pictures folders. So there's not normally a videos or a downloads folder associated with OneDrive as the cloud storage is normally quite limited. Now with every Windows 10 install, there is also a public folder created within Windows, which can be accessed by all users on the same computer or optionally shared in a network. So there's an environmental variable public. And once again, we can get to public documents public music, public video, public downloads, and so on. So these are the common folders that users access. Now, actual programs tend to use the application data folder, which is hidden by default. So if we enable hidden files, we can access it. So within the subfolder, there is roaming and there is local. So roaming is the default one. So when we use the environmental variable app data, it takes us to roaming. And if we use the environmental variable local app data, it takes us to the local subfolder. And within this local subfolder, there's this folder temp, and it can also be accessed using the environmental variable temp or the environmental variable TMP. So as well as the application data, there's an environmental variable for program files and the common files within the program files. So we've got program files and we've got common program files. And we've also got x86 versions of these. And there is also the program data folder. And the all user profile is basically the same folder. So within the app data folder, for example, we can get to the startup folder. So it's within the Microsoft and then Windows and then start menu and then programs and then startup subfolder. Or we can go up a level and get to the programs. So Anaconda is installed. So if I go here, you can see that I've got the shortcuts. And the Anaconda installer likely used the environmental variable to install Anaconda in this location and give the start menu shortcuts. Now we can also access the home drive and system drive, which are normally C for a standard Windows installation, and the system root drive, which is normally C Windows. 
So it's possible to create a custom environment variable. So if I right click this file location, and if I try to use my custom environmental variable, we see it doesn't work because it doesn't exist. So to create one, I'm going to right click the start button and select system. And then to the bottom, actually it's shown to the right here, I want to select advanced system settings and then environment variables. And then new. And then I want to create the variable name, so that's going to be Python. So you type this in without the percentage signs and then paste the location. Select OK and then close this window. So now when I type in the environmental variable Python, it's going to take me to the folder that I assigned it to. So if I just launch JupyterLab now, I can access the environmental variables within Python by using the OS module. So if I import OS in a new cell, and once we've got OS, we can access the attribute os.environ. And this essentially gives us a dictionary, so we can index using the key. So this is an environmental variable user profile and it gives me C users Philip. Now remember that the left slash is a special character in Python. And so to show a left slash, we need to have two left slashes. So we could assign this to a variable if we wanted. And if we wanted to access a subfolder, then we can perform string concatenation. So we'll either need to provide two left slashes together or we can use the relative string by beginning it with R. So I shouldn't have a slash at the end. So now it appends OK. So I could assign this to a number variable doc. And we can have a look to see if our custom environmental variable shows. So this should be the key Python and it gives the location as expected. 